Welcome back to Dr. Skull Games, and today I'm going to be exploring chess, aphantasia, and how I review my games. That is, how do I review my games knowing that I cannot see anything when I close my eyes? There is no chessboard there. Okay, so I played last night an over-the-board game. It was a game 55. My opponent played e4. Uh, I generally play the Karo Khan against that, so I played d6, and my opponent played d3. Now, immediately, this is a bit troubling for me because I'm out of book, and so now I'm just sort of figuring out, like, what do I want to do? Um, and here I could feel myself kind of leaning into some Karo Khan stories. Um, one story being that, well, I guess let's make d5 first because that's a pretty straightforward move. And this is where the big issues come. I wasn't really expecting this move. It feels kind of weird. I don't really want to take here because then I develop their knight. But I have this story going in my head, and I think it's a legitimate story, that I don't want to box in my bishop with this pawn move yet, and I really do want to move e6. So I really wanted to get my bishop out. And this is where I think having aphantasia kind of affected me and sort of leaning into stories of other openings. And so I was like, well, if I take here, yes, I do develop his bishop, but I'm going to get into a position that's very familiar. Possibly he'll go here. I'll go here. And we'll just sort of migrate into a standard classical variation of the Karo Khan that I know pretty well. But clearly he doesn't have to do that, right? Like when I go here, he can just go, well, that's cool, but the story is different because this pawn is usually back here and now I don't have to worry at all. I can do literally whatever I want and it's kind of unlikely that I'm going to give up the two bishops for such a small gain or, or no gain. So he then surprised me by moving his knight back and I was like, wait, what is happening? Like, why are you doing that? So let's keep track. He's moved his knight once, twice, three times. That can't be good. Um, so I'm already sort of thinking like, ooh, boy, okay. All right, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. We're just going to develop. So I develop. He develops. I play e6, right? This was kind of the point of why I made such a weird move already was to be able to play e6. And he's moving his knight again a fourth time. And this is when I made a mistake that I've made many times. I don't know if it's related to specifically to my aphantasia or not. But I get in my head this story of, like, my opponent is playing, I don't know, do we want to say bad? Do we want to say slowly? Do we want to say in a meandering way? But whatever it is, there's no way moving the knight four times is a good idea out of the first seven moves. And notice where it is. It's not even in a good spot. Um, so my assumption is maybe he's going to go here and then here and move the knight six times. Six times? I got to be able to punish that, right? So instead of really focusing on, like, what is the best move in this position, I went into these ideas of, like, how can I punish this move? Um, and so I did consider here, like, it felt like a turning point of where do I want this bishop? Um, do I want to go something like here? Which I'm probably going to have to do. If I think this knight is trading off for this bishop, this pawn is going to end here. And so I'm going to need to play g6 at some point. Well, then I might as well put the bishop here. But it's not very aggressive. And I was like, ooh, I should be able to punish this. So I went knight c or bishop c5, which I think is a fine move. It's controlling a good diagonal. But I went there with a the mindset of I'm going to punish this move with things like this. I'm going to get the knight on the attack. I'm going to bring the queen on the attack. It's also hitting b2, which, again, is part of the story in these kind of openings that, that bishop on c1 is often moved and b2 as a target, but obviously it's not a target right now. The bishop's here. So I have like all these lingering and competing stories that are sort of augmenting my calculation here in a negative way. Often the stories that I know about positions help me, and I really feel like my stories here were very problematic. So yes, again, moves the knight another time. And I considered moving back here and saying I want to hold on to the two bishops. And then if he goes here and here, this will be fine. But I, I decided, no, no, no. We're, we're getting into like Paul Morphy territory. I'm going to castle. You're going to take. You've moved the knight six times. Like we can look at this position and go, uh, they're not castled. They're much less developed. I must be ahead. 
I must be, right? And if I'm ahead, and I'm ahead because of a dynamic situation where I have more development, then I need to push it and I need to take advantage of that is the story that I kept telling myself. So instead of making, like, so they moved here, instead of making a very normal move of just playing rookie eight and putting some pressure on, I was like, it's not enough. And then, you know, afterwards, um, I checked with, because in my own analysis, I was like, this is just equal. And the engine's like, yeah, it's just equal. You know, your opponent was playing the white pieces. They can kind of waste a bunch of time. Um, and even though my opponent moved that night six of like the first nine moves, it was fine. This is actually even and the computer's number one move. So that is a little staggering to me that this position would be equal after so many wasted moves by my opponent. But what I did not do was objectively say, let's look at the position. Let's be really clear. Because when I did, I saw my ideas didn't work. But I was like, they have to work. They have to. The narrative about this position is my opponent has played ridiculously. I must be able to punish him. All right. So instead, I went aggressive. We're going to double up on this, this diagonal hitting this pawn. Of course, they're going to castle. I'm going to play knight g4 and be attacking. I noticed my opponent could play d4, and I assumed he would play it. And I thought, that's okay. I'm going to rearrange my pieces. I'm still going to be on h2. I've still got this oppressive knight. But after this happens, and then he kicks my knight, it's like, wait, hold on. What, what do I even have here? I have nothing. I had a target on h2. He got to move it with tempo. So if I stick my queen on c7 and hit the air around the king, uh, so what? So what? Clearly, I have nothing now. Um, if I had something before, which apparently I also had nothing then either. But I just really had that hard time shaking that story, even when my calculation said, hey, man, this is not working out how you thought it was going to be work, how it was going to work out. You need to recalibrate. Okay, so my opponent plays here, which seems quite slow to me, but sure, I develop, he develops, and suddenly I'm like, I'm pretty good here. Like, this is pointless, right? He's not, that's, that's doing nothing. Like, it looks scary, but it's doing nothing. Um, my pieces are developed. I'm totally fine. Uh, he goes here, which is a little scary, right? We can see there's like these discovery possibilities. So I just put a knight there. Um, and here especially, I just looked at this and I was like, this is a pretty even game. I, I should be fine. But I did have another story going through my head, which was like this nagging idea that you know if we trade off these rooks on the e-file which looks very likely although I, unless i'm willing to just give up control of it i don't have an attack and now my opponent has two bishops and my pawns are a little wonky like i think i'm still fine there but like i'm a little bit nervous about that and so i start trying to kind of like make some attack going because i still have in my head right like i still haven't been able to abandon this idea that these ideas are going to be good. And now I have all these new ideas. I can bring the rook here. I can slide. We can go into this idea and reroute these pieces so that maybe h2 does become a target. I, somehow I just couldn't escape from this narrative. And in doing so, I'm putting my pieces on weirder and weirder squares. Like, like I'm, I'm attacking this piece. It's like, okay, it just goes here. So what? Um... And I think this is fine to try to double up on the e-file. I'm not really sure what else I'm supposed to do. But then after we start trading, I, I've got this bishop, this uh, this rearrangement of my pieces in mind, and I'm there. I did it. I did what I wanted to do. But to what end? Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like I have anything here. Um, and my pieces are a little bit wonky. Um, I saw that my opponent could go here and double attack this pawn. My opponent was moving very fast, and I realized that I had a good answer to this, so I wasn't worried. I just went here, and then now he's got to retreat his his knight. And again, my pieces seem fine. So once again, I feel like I've sort of pulled myself into a decent position from a pretty bad spot. The problem is I'm way behind on time in this game. My opponent was moving almost instantly the whole game. It was a very bizarre situation to see an adult doing that. Um, and I... This is another narrative. I told myself, I'm not going to speed way up because I want to meet 
his blunder that he will inevitably have from playing so fast with a good move, bad news. He didn't blunder. He did not blunder until like the last move of the game. It was quite annoying with how quickly he was playing. Okay. So I decided to break this pin. Um, he attacks my knight. I come back. And here I started kind of losing the thread of the game. I just didn't really know what I was supposed to do. This Remember, this whole time I've had this narrative in my head of like, we're attacking. And clearly, there's not much of an attack, but I've got F4 sort of on the horizon. So now I'm playing for that. I'm playing for sticking my, my queen in here and playing F4. And I get that to happen. And now I'm thinking like, Ooh, we got, we got the queen on the board here. I've still got some pieces in play. I feel like I must have something, but I really just couldn't find anything. I didn't want to leave this file because then I felt like maybe my opponent would have some way to invade. Looking at it now, that seems kind of absurd because every square, every entry square is hit. So leaving that file won't be so destructive. It's not like I have anywhere great to go. It's not like I can go here or here, so, but it, but it was, I did have in my mind, like, I, I don't really want to leave that file. And then after he plays this move, I'm like, oh, he, he his, his bad piece is kind of fixed, the knight's going to get fixed, and I don't really have that much. So I decided to go here with the idea of going here, maybe into here. Um, and again, my pieces seem fine, but I can't really figure out exactly what I'm doing. And I uh, just continue trying to think about, like, how can I make this attack work? How can I can I keep piling up on G3? Like, I can keep hitting it. Um, the problem is they're backing it up three times. So it's, like, it's hard to make something happen here. All right. So we get the, the attack on the, on the knight. C5 seemed a little weird. I could just put my knight right back in a good spot. And then here, um, I felt like I didn't want to take here. This just seemed sort of dangerous that now these two pawns look much more powerful than if I let him take and I'm blockading this and, and holding this one back. I, again, I, I felt pretty fine here. Um, and I'm just pressuring this, this king and kind of hoping I can make something happen. And here, he finally made a mistake after moving instantly. And I was so low on time here. I had gotten down to 45 seconds that... I could no longer sort of play perfectly. And I, I just missed this idea that there was going to be, if I if I were to take here, can't take here because of the pin, and now things get pretty bad, right? When we're threatening a, a brutal um, fork, so things, things would have been bad. I went here. He takes, takes. And now, oh, now it feels like it's slipping away a little bit, right? Like, can this queen come down to like here and help push this pawn through. And I started thinking like, I think I'm going to lose this. I'm down to about 20 seconds or no, actually maybe 30 seconds at this point. But I saw it. Now I saw, oh, this is here. Oh my goodness. I have this. And my opponent, this was his big blunder. Instantly. Not even thinking. He just goes, bloop. And I was like, wait, what? You took what was a pretty good move. And turned it into a bonkers good move. And this is actually a straight win. I only had 13 seconds here. So I was just very happy to do some sort of repeating of moves. And call it a day. Um, but he didn't. He offered me the draw here. I took it. And I was pretty happy being at 13 seconds and taking the draw here. But if we look at... Let's see how far back can we go. This position. When he goes here... There is a win here, but I just didn't have enough time to find it. I did see, well, if I go here, I'm threatening mate, which is great. But what I missed was I thought, well, they would just take the knight. Now there's no mate. I'm I'm dead. I lose. But of course, we win the queen. Now, hopefully with 13 seconds and a five second delay, I could actually win from here because I, I can scoop up some material really quickly, right? I, this is free. There's no way to... to guard that, then I can go here, back to here, grab this one pretty easily. I think I should be able to win this one, even with a five second delay. I've actually practiced that. So, bottom line with this game is that I feel like by having aphantasia, I tend to lean into the story of the game 
Um, and I think in many times this is helpful. It helps me hold on to important pieces and elements. It helps me make connections to previous games, um, to other positions I've seen. But in this particular game, it really led me into some pretty terrible decision making. Uh, because my opponent moved the same night six times out of nine moves or something this night. Here, let's let's look real quick. It's just so fun to look at. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of his first nine moves were the same night. I could not shake the story that I should be able to punish that, that I should be the one attacking. It pretty much permeated the whole rest of the game was me figuring out how to punish that series of moves. And that is the thing that I have the most trouble, and I think as a result of my aphantasia, is letting go of stories that are now irrelevant, right? It was very relevant that he was moving his knight in such bizarre ways, and perhaps in those moments I could have punished it. But at this point, there's nothing to punish anymore, right? Like, he's fine. He's fine. It's not. He's not doing great. But he's fine. And we can just move here, get a nice development, move on with our lives, play a great game. But I was not able to let go. So that is my video uh, about how I analyze my games. I'm really trying to figure out um, how I can make better moves, how I can acknowledge that I have aphantasia and see both the strengths and the weaknesses of that. I think some days it's a real strength having aphantasia and making these stories and making these connections. But this was one of those games where I'm trying to learn how to let things go. So I'll see you next time for the next chess and aphantasia series.